This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Engineer from anywhere. Perform tests from your office, lab, or living room. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, we have you covered. Our hardware and software is trusted all over the world. Global company headquartered in Troy, Michigan. Intrepid Control Systems. BMW and Honda reported their earnings for the most recent quarter, and like their competitors, the coronavirus really hurt their numbers. Let's start with BMW. Car sales were down by a quarter compared to a year ago, which led to a drop in revenue of over 20%. Its EBIT and net profit both got clobbered and were in the red for the quarter. But as dismal as those numbers are, the company says sales are starting to bounce back and it expects to make a pro profit if demand recovers. However, its outlook does not factor in the potential impact of a second wave of COVID. Moving over to Honda, the numbers don't look much better. The company sold a little over 790,000 vehicles, which is down 40% compared to a year ago, and its revenue plunged by nearly 50%. That caused a huge drop in both its operating and net profits, which ended up in the red. Looking forward, Honda expects a 6% decline in annual sales and a nearly 70% drop in its annual operating profit, which would be its worst results in a decade. While all assembly plants in the U.S. are running again, automakers are struggling to rebuild their inventory levels. They only added about 3,200 vehicles compared to June. And with sales picking up, that means the supply dropped to only 55 days down from 59 days. Subaru is in the worst shape of all. When Tom Dahl, the CEO of Subaru of America, was on AutoLine this week, he worried about their day's supply. Um, so we're expecting a need, to be frank with you, because our day's supply is so low, as I spoke about earlier. We need to have the pipeline refilled as quickly as possible. And, um, you know, we're going to struggle here probably in, in July in the first part of August because we've got to resupply our retailers. Mm -hmm. But it'll probably be around mid-August to the end of August before we get back to a reasonable day supply. Um, you know, and then of course in the fall and as we go through the winter, the day supply should get back to what we would like to see somewhere in that 40 to 45 day supply range. Let's put some numbers on the low day supply Tom Dahl is talking about. Right now, Subaru only has a 16 day supply for its entire lineup while the Ascent, Crosstrek, and Forester are only at 14 days. And that explains why Subaru sales were down last month. Hey, keep an eye out later today for our coverage of the management briefing seminars, which are put on by the Center for Automotive Research in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This year, MBS is going virtual, and so will our coverage of the conference. We'll be providing condensed wrap-ups that hit the highlights of the conference, so that you can keep up with the latest insights from some of the savviest people in the auto industry. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. Driving your vehicle to ridiculously high mileage might just land you a free vehicle from that same automaker. We've seen it before, and that's the case for Brian Murphy in his 2007 Nissan Frontier. Murphy, an independent delivery driver, racked up over a million miles on his truck, and now Nissan's giving him a brand new one. And that is an insane amount of miles to clock up in just 13 years, which was achieved through 12 to 14 hour workdays at three to 400 miles a day. And funny enough, no one knows the exact mileage on the truck. Its digital odometer doesn't go past 999,999 miles. And Brian hit that in late January. So it's possible that the truck has wrapped up over 60,000 more miles since then. Also funny is that if this old truck didn't have any stickers on it, we're not sure we could tell it apart from the new one. Goes to show how little has changed for the frontier in that time.
Kia showed off the hybrid version of its B-segment crossover, the Stonic, which is aimed primarily at the European market and goes on sale next quarter. As you know, Europe has very strict CO2 emission standards, and that's what this package is all about. Kia will release efficiency numbers at a later date. But the vehicle features a 1-liter turbo with a 48-volt-mild hybrid system. A CVT comes standard with the package, but Kia also offers its intelligent manual transmission. That allows you to shift the gear lever like a regular manual, but there's no linkage from the clutch pedal to the transmission. Instead, the clutch is activated electronically. Interestingly, both transmissions allow the engine to turn off when the car is coasting, and then it restarts the instant the driver hits any of the pedals. And it works at speeds up to 125 kilometers an hour, or about 77 miles per hour. That kind of reminds us of the old Saab Sonnet, which is probably the most recent vehicle that allowed for what they called freewheeling. But the engine on the Sonnet never turned off, because that was way before electronics ever made their way into cars. While General Motors wants to build almost all of the components for its EVs in-house, Ford is taking a different track. It's sourcing the drive unit for the Mustang Mach-E from Borg Warner, and that includes both the rear drive and all-wheel drive versions. Borg is making the gearbox and thermal management unit and will integrate them with motors and power electronics from other suppliers. While Borg designed its own integrated power unit, this one differs slightly. Instead of using parallel axis gearing, it uses concentric gears with outputs on the same axis as the electric motor, which results in a more compact package. And here's where the numbers get interesting. The drive module can take input speeds up to 13,800 RPM, and it can handle 4,278 newton meters of torque. That's 3,155 pound-feet of torque which we think is just perfect for going to get groceries. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering. Boost your game. And by Borg Warner. Propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Could a new version of the Lincoln Mark 8 be coming out? It's a possibility. Auto Forecast Solutions reports that Ford is going to start building a Lincoln Coupe in China in 2023 that fits into the CD segment. That's all the information we have for now, but what do you think it should be named? Mark 9? Or maybe something else? Speaking of coupes, Infiniti is taking the same path as a number of German automakers and will offer a coupe or fastback version of one of its utility vehicles. The automaker teased this image of the all-new QX55, which will be revealed on social media on November 11th. Gordon Murray revealed his new supercar, the T50. Murray, probably best known for designing the McLaren F1, wanted the T50 to be a spiritual successor to the F1. And one thing that we do see carry over is the central driving position, which is then flanked by seats on either side. The body and chassis are made from carbon fiber, and with the key focus on light weighting, the T50 tips the scale at a little under 1,000 kilograms, which is a hair short of 2,200 pounds. That's amazingly light, especially considering it has a V12 engine sitting behind the driver. The 3.9 liter unit is naturally aspirated, revs to over 12,000 RPM, and makes roughly 660 horsepower. Another highlight is a 400 millimeter fan off the back that helps improve aerodynamics. Add it all up and the T50 should have blistering performance. Production, which is limited to just 100 examples, will start in January of 2022 and price starts at 2.36 million pounds or about $3.1 million. In other supercar news, Pininfarina, which was purchased by Mahindra in 2015, is coming out with an anniversary edition of its all-electric Batista that will debut in a series of videos starting on August 7th. The standard Batista is already an amazing car with four electric motors that combine for 1,900 horsepower, which allows the car to hit 100 kilometers an hour in under two seconds. 
super fast. It also features a carbon fiber body and chassis, but the anniversary edition, which is limited to just five examples, takes that a step further with a bespoke rear wing, rear arrow fins, and other details that improve downforce. Lighter wheels in three signature colors are available as well. Like the T50, the Batista Anniversary Edition is priced like a supercar at 2.6 million euro, or roughly 3.1 million dollars. And before we go, a reminder here to catch this week's Autoline After Hours with Mark Del Rosso, the CEO for Genesis in North America. He's got a ton of automotive experience having worked at Toyota, Bentley, and Audi, and we're eager to learn how he's going to rebuild Genesis in the American market. Keith Naughton from Bloomberg will also join us. He covers the Ford beat, and he'll have a lot to say about why Jim Farley was named CEO at Ford and why they announced that now. And so we come to the end of today's report. Thanks for making Autoline Daily a part of your day.